What's going on, Ding Dongs? We're back again. Like I said, every week we're gonna be doing it. Just like I was before, but yeah, now I'm back, I guess. Pretty nice weather. We got some good weather. It's December 21st and it's 51 degrees outside, which makes no sense, but I'm totally cool with it. And I'm sorry, but starting another video with more work on the daily. I got some Diode Dynamics HID bulbs, and then my halogens will go in the SC. Which is perfect, right? It's perfect. What more can you ask for? So, Philip. This one's for you. You're finally gonna have a. Uh, she's finally gonna have headlights, so we can drive it at night. Carmod's gloves. I bought Cheryl's box. Alrighty. So this is super weird. Very different. The headlight is in there. Took me a while, but I found my diode dynamics ballasts from like f six years ago. I've had these on my first car, which was an XB. I had them on my old SC. I had them. Yeah. Had them on a lot of cars. Well, two, but yeah, a lot of years. So I just plugged it in, Let's see if it works. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's nice and bright. Cool beans. Let's install this. Let me grab a flashlight so I can see where the pins line up. There it is. It's installed. Damn, that's bright. Oh, crap. But yeah. The two large pins go on the right, if you're looking at it like this, upside down. It's a lot of light leakage, though. I don't know if that's normal. Look how bright it is inside. I guess it's not really sealed off or anything. The other side's gonna be a pain in the ass because that washer fluid thing's right there in the way. The nice thing about these headlights is they're super huge. So all that stuff with the ballast and the sub-ballast and all that stuff, it all fits inside there. You can just put the little cap on, and look at that. It's like you don't even have HIDs in your car, dude. It's like completely stock. That's freaking awesome. Whereas like on the SC, you gotta like mount it to like something. The ballast just fucking dangle around everywhere. I like this. I like that a lot. Now, it can get started on the other side, which is gonna be a lot harder. Because of this washer fluid bottle, which I think I might be able to move over. Maybe I won't have to. Also, I don't know if it's Toyota only, but having this little shelf, dude, best thing ever. You leave all your tools there, drive around for a month, it's all still there, right when you come back. It's great. Yeah, I'm gonna have to disconnect this guy. I'll uh, take this guy off, get something, push that pin in, comes out like that, put it away somewhere safe. This guy moves over, twist, and there you go, you got more room now. You can probably even pull this thing out, yeah. And it's done. God, that looks so much better. Oh, it doesn't really match the LEDs though. Oh, wait, no, it's getting whiter. There we go. Not bad. The other side works too. Yeah. It's a little, you know what, the LEDs are bluer. That's weird, you would think the LEDs would be whiter. Well, the LEDs are a little bluer, but yeah, looks good. I do have to adjust this light though. I think after the small accident I had, where the side got hit, the light uh, I, like bumped down a little bit. But I don't really know where to adjust it. I think it's right here. I have to adjust the height of it. Screw, or yeah, this top screw, adjust the up and down, you see that? So at night, when the, I'm on the street, I'm gonna have to adjust that a little bit because it's pointing too far down. The right side is supposed to be pointing up at the pedestrians on the sidewalk, so it needs to be a little higher than the than the driver's side, which needs to point down so it doesn't blind people. So I gotta adjust that tonight. But for now, let's go put some headlights in the SC. All right, got the bulbs plugged in. Let's see if it works. 
apparently 9012 and 9006 are the same. Let's see. Yay! They both work. Hell yeah. Alright, let's install them. Exactly fit. As you can see, this uh, one tab is way longer than all the other ones. It doesn't fit, so just gotta give it a little trim. Oh, this is not gonna work by the blade. It's some hard plastic pliers. There we go. Is that in? I guess that's in. Cool. Nice. There we go. Got headlights on one side at least. We got headlights. All right, now I'm gonna drive the car forward. We're gonna do some more welding today. Let's see if I can do this without a steering wheel. Things like gas in here already. This is looking decent though. I can't wait to make the shift boots. I got some material you'll see. So today, we're gonna close up that hole. That hole. Look at that, you can see the engine. And possibly that hole, we'll see. That one I might not need to do. Cause that one, actually yeah, I might do that. And then those I'll probably do another time. Cause that's a lot of work. I gotta, I'm gonna have to glue those. I don't wanna weld over that. First thing I wanna do is get these old AC lines. See these big ones? We cut them off and we just left them. So I wanna get these old lines out. They're just running right here to over there. I wanna get those out. So we got a bit of a cleaner engine bay and also they'll be out of that hole over there. I gave up on this. I can't get it out. You see it right there? That big pipe thing? There's a bolt directly underneath this whole fucking thing. So I can't get it out. It's not in the way right now, so I'm just gonna let it be. Just fucking forget about it. Let's do this now. Let's keep going. I'm wasting so much damn time. So this is the bracket that the AC lines used to go into. And what I realized is it's made out of steel. So instead of welding to the body in that spot, I'm just going to cover up this hole and just bolt it back in. So, yeah, it'll be much easier. Only problem is it's got this rubber casing over it that I want to keep because it seems to be a uh, sealing. 
but I don't know if it's, yeah, see, it's on both sides. It, it wraps around, it goes from here and wraps around the other side. And when I try to weld it, it's obviously going to light on fire. So I'm going to try to trim with as much of it back as I can, and then uh, cut out a template and uh, weld this up. Pieces are cut and grinded down. There it is. Look at that perfect fit. It's gonna be sick. So now I'm gonna clean up this piece, grind it all down, and then we can weld it up. There it is. I got it all welded up, but I don't have any silicone, and I'd like to seal it here because I don't want to weld this whole thing. It's already warping like crazy because it's very thin metal. But yeah, I don't want to weld it all. That's just a pointless waste of time, so I'm going to get some silicone, I'm going to seal it here, and then do this another day. But for now, it's already dark outside, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do some other stuff. So I'll see you tomorrow. Look at that beater. How's it going? It's morning, nice and early. Got lots of work to do. We're going to try to get it done. Got some silicone. Let's seal this up. I gotta cut this whole tube thing off because this used to go inside of there like that. I was looking around at my vacuum lines and I realized I was literally not using any of these. They were like this and they were just wrapped, like see I just looped them back. So I just removed them all. Ran this one straight to the fuel pressure regulator, this one straight to the charcoal canister and blocked that one off and we're, go we're good, that's it. I hear a little like hissing, but I think it's just the fuel rail, because the car is running fine, so, yeah, good stuff, that cleans it up, look how much nicer that looks, that's awesome, no more stuff all over the engine, strip the paint on the firewall, You good? Start welding. Man, this is gonna suck to weld. Being in this position. died and for some reason this one's dead too. However, as you can see, it's welded in. Looks horrible. The sheet metal is really thin and just keeps falling apart. But yeah, looks good enough for me. Now I'm gonna silicone it as much as possible. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to reach that, but I'm gonna try to get it in the seam there. I'm probably gonna have to use my finger. 
So these brake lines are in the way. But yeah, I'm gonna try to silicone this and um, still waiting for the other one to dry. The other one is still wet. There we have it, finished product. I put some primer on it. There's some silicone on the inside and there's a lot of silicone on the outside. I had to spread it with my finger. Just, and I can't see what I'm touching, so I had to just do it by feel. So hopefully it's closed up. I mean, it's fine if it's not completely closed up because I just want it to, you know, not spill fumes into the cabin. That's it. So there's one more hole that I wanted to plug up. I don't know if I will. It's under here, and I don't think the engine fumes are getting in here anymore because I put this on. For where the fan used to suck in air. Right there, that big one. I might just stuff a rag in there and call it done. Because that's a big hole, and it's upside down. I don't want to weld that. That would be a, that would just be such a pain in the ass. And the sheet metal inside the cabin, I don't know why it does not weld as good as other sheet metal in the car. It just really easily breaks. It falls apart very quickly when welding. I guess we can do the, the speaker holes. Yeah, let's get started on those. All right, so I got my rough templates cut out. There we have it, the whole set, cut out, ready to be welded. I'm gonna grab the wire brush, or the wire thingy-majig on the angle grinder, wire the paint off, and get these tacked in. I think I'm gonna go grab uh, some Taco Bell for lunch. Here we go, first time drive through in the drift car. Taco Bell, baby! Hopefully I don't stall it. Shit, I gotta decide what I want. What's this lady doing? I haven't stalled yet. I'm almost there. This might be this might be it though. I might stall here. There's a big hill. And my wheels are chirping like crazy. Because welded diff life. So yeah. Let's see how it goes. See if I let go of the brakes to start to roll back and my handbrake doesn't work, so yeah, it's not good. Is welded up. Everything is solid. Nothing's coming out or rattling. Now I'm just gonna wire brush it, spread some silicone over the top of it <clears throat> so it's nice and sealed so that smoke doesn't come in through there. And yeah, we're done for today. Oh, and I gotta put that thing back in too. So let's get it all done quick before the sun sets. And we're done for today. That's all siliconed up. Good. Now we're doing 
this piece. I don't know if you can see that right there. That is done. I just realized I forgot to paint it, but whatever, I don't care. It's done. It's sealed all the way around. That's all sealed. I'm probably gonna goober in more silicone here around the edge, just in case. So yeah, that's done. That's done. That is done. Thank you so there for holding that for me. And that is it for today. That is it. Whew. Oh man, the interior hopefully won't stink. Probably will stink, because nothing I do ever works. It's probably coming from somewhere else, but whatever. Next video, I'm gonna build a shift boot, because uh, I don't have a shift boot, so I'm gonna build a shift boot, and I'm gonna rebuild the shifter with these guys, the brass inserts. I'm gonna rebuild it with these instead of the bearings in there, so it doesn't have any side-to-side -side wobble. So I want it to be nice and stiff. Whew. So yeah, good day today. We got the vacuum lines all cleaned up. Here, let's put this guy back in. Boom. Okay. AC lines out. Besides that thing, that big thing will come out once the ABS comes out. Vacuum lines cleaned up. Speaker holes welded shut and siliconed. That hole welded shut and silicone. AC line holes welded shut and silicone. Shifter welded shut. Next up, shift boot, shifter rebuild. And yeah, just cleaning the whole thing up. It's gonna be ready to go. Thank you for watching, everyone. And I'll see you next week. America, 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 America. Do you have your passport?